Marcel Moss, French, Moss, the 10th of May 1872 to the 10th of February 1950, was a French sociologist. The nephew of Émile Durkheim, Moss' academic work traversed the boundaries between sociology and anthropology. Today, he is perhaps better recognized for his influence on the latter discipline, particularly with respect to his analyses of topics such as magic, sacrifice, and gift exchange in different cultures around the world. Moss had a significant influence upon Claude Lévy-Strauss, the founder of structural anthropology. His most famous book is The Gift 1925. Topic. Background Moss was born in Epinal, Vosges, to a Jewish family, and studied philosophy at Bordeaux, where his maternal uncle Émile Durkheim was teaching at the time. He passed the aggregation in 1893. He was also first cousin of the much younger Claudette née Raphael Bloch, a marine biologist and mother of Maurice Bloch, who has become a noted anthropologist. Instead of taking the usual route of teaching at a lycée following college, Moss moved to Paris and took up the study of comparative religion and Sanskrit. His first publication in 1896 marked the beginning of a prolific career that would produce several landmarks in the sociological literature. Like many members of Anne Sociologique, Moss was attracted to socialism, especially that espoused by Jean Jaurès. He was particularly active in the events of the Dreyfus Affair. Towards the end of the century, he helped edit such left-wing papers as Le Populaire, La Humanité and Le Mouvement Socialiste, the last in collaboration with Georges Sorel. In 1901, Moss took up a chair in the History of Religion and Uncivilized Peoples at the École Préique des Hautes Études EPHE, one of the Grandes Écoles in Paris. It was at this time that he began drawing more on ethnography, and his work began to develop characteristics now associated with formal anthropology. The years of World War I were absolutely devastating for Moss. Many of his friends and colleagues died in the war, and his uncle Durkheim died shortly before its end. Politically, the post-war years were also difficult for Moss. Durkheim had made changes to school curricula across France, and after his death a backlash against his students began. Like many other followers of Durkheim, Moss took refuge in administration. He secured Durkheim's legacy by founding institutions to carry out directions of research, such as l'Institut Français de Sociologie and l'Institut d'Ethnologie in 1926. Among students he influenced was George Devereux, later an influential anthropologist who combined ethnology with psychoanalysis. In 1931, Moss took up the chair of sociology at the Collège de France. He actively fought against antisemitism and racial politics both before and after World War II. He died in 1950. Topic: Theoretical views. In his classic work The Gift, Moss argued that gifts are never truly free. Rather, human history is full of examples of gifts bringing about reciprocal exchange. The famous question that drove his inquiry into the anthropology of the gift was, What power resides in the object given that causes its recipient to pay it back? 1990-3. The answer is simple, the gift is a total prestation. See Law of Obligations, imbued with spiritual mechanisms, engaging the honor of both giver and receiver, the term total prestation, or total social fact. Fate's social total was coined by his student Maurice Leinhart after Durkheim's social fact. Such transactions transcend the divisions between the spiritual and the material in a way that, according to Moss, is almost magical. The giver does not merely give an object but also part of himself, for the object is indissolubly tied to the giver. The objects are never completely separated from the men who exchange them. 1990-31 because of this bond between giver and gift, the act of giving creates a social bond with an obligation to reciprocate on the part of the recipient. Not to reciprocate means to lose honor and status, but the spiritual implications can be even worse. In Polynesia, failure to reciprocate means to lose mana, one's spiritual source of authority and wealth. Moss distinguished between three obligations, giving, the necessary initial step for the creation and maintenance of social relationships, receiving, for to refuse to receive is to reject the social bond, and reciprocating in order to demonstrate one's own liberality, honor, and wealth. 
An important notion in Moss conceptualization of gift exchange is what Gregory 1982, 1997 refers to as inalienability. In a commodity economy, there is a strong distinction between objects and persons through the notion of private property. Objects are sold, meaning that the ownership rights are fully transferred to the new owner. The object has thereby become alienated from its original owner. In a gift economy, however, the objects that are given are inalienated from the givers, they are loaned rather than sold and ceded. It is the fact that the identity of the giver is invariably bound up with the object given that causes the gift to have a power which compels the recipient to reciprocate. Because gifts are inalienable they must be returned, the act of giving creates a gift debt that has to be repaid. Because of this, the notion of an expected return of the gift creates a relationship over time between two individuals. In other words, through gift giving, a social bond evolves that is assumed to continue through space and time until the future moment of exchange. Gift exchange therefore leads to a mutual interdependence between giver and receiver. According to Moss, the free gift that is not returned is a contradiction because it cannot create social ties. Following the Durkheimian quest for understanding social cohesion through the concept of solidarity, Moss's argument is that solidarity is achieved through the social bonds created by gift exchange. Moss emphasizes that exchanging gifts resulted from the will of attaching other people to put people under obligations, because, in theory such gifts are voluntary, but in fact they are given and repaid under obligation. Topic. Critiques. Moss's views on the nature of gift exchange have had critics. French anthropologist Alain Testart for example, argues that there are «free» gifts, such as passers by giving money to beggars, e.g. in a large western city. Donor and receiver do not know each other and are unlikely ever to meet again. In this context, the donation certainly creates no obligation on the side of the beggar to reciprocate, neither the donor nor the beggar have such an expectation. Testart argues that only the latter can actually be enforced. He feels that Moss overstated the magnitude of the obligation created by social pressures, particularly in his description of the potlatch amongst North American Indians. Another example of a non-reciprocal, free, gift is provided by British anthropologist James Laidlaw 2000. He describes the social context of Indian Jain renouncers, a group of itinerant celibate renouncers living an ascetic life of spiritual purification and salvation. The Jainist interpretation of the doctrine of ahimsa an extremely rigorous application of principles of non-violence influences the diet of Jain renouncers and compels them to avoid preparing food, as this could potentially involve violence against microscopic organisms. Since Jain renouncers do not work, they rely on food donations from lay families within the Jain community. However, the former must not appear to be having any wants or desires, and only very hesitantly and apologetically receives the food prepared by the latter. Free gifts therefore challenge the aspects of the Mossian notion of the gift unless the moral and non-material qualities of gifting are considered. These aspects are, of course, at the heart of the gift, as demonstrated in books such as Annette Wiener's 1992 Inalienable Possessions, The Paradox of Keeping While Giving. Moss offers one possible response to such criticisms in the section Note on Alms. Topic legacy While Moss is known for several of his own works, most notably his masterpiece essay Sur la Don, The Gift, much of his best work was done in collaboration with members of the Anne Sociologique, including Durkheim, Primitive Classification, Henri Hubert, Outline of a General Theory of Magic and Essay on the Nature and Function of Sacrifice, Paul Fauconet, Sociology, and others. Like many prominent French academics, Moss did not train a great number of students. Nevertheless, many anthropologists claim to have followed in his footsteps, most notably Claude Lévy-Strauss. The essay on the gift is the origin for anthropological studies of reciprocity. His analysis of the potlatch has inspired Georges Bataille the accursed share, then the situationists the name of the first situationist journal was Potlatch. This term has been used by many interested in gift economies and open source software, although this latter use sometimes differs from Moss' original formulation. See also Lewis Hyde's revolutionary critique of Moss in Imagination and the Erotic Life of Property. He also influenced the movement anti-utilitariste dans les sciences sociales and David Greber. 
Topic selected works Essay sur la nature et la fonction du sacrifice, with Henri Hubert 1898. La sociologie, objet et méthode, with Paul Fauconnet De quelque formes primitives de classification, with Durkheim 1902. Esquisse d'une théorie générale de la magie, with Henri Hubert 1902. Essay sur la donne, 1925. Les techniques du corps, 1934. 1 Journal de Psychologie 32 3-4. Reprinted in Moss, Sociologie et Anthropologie, 1936, Paris, P.U.F. Sociologie et Anthropologie, Selected Writings, 1950. Manuel d'Ethnography, 1967. Editions Peyot and Rivages, Manual of Ethnography 2009. Translated by N.J. Allen. Bergen Books. Topic. See also Archaeology of Trade Bronislaw Malinowski De Benefices Cooler Ring Ernest Becker Topic References Topic Further reading Topic External links Collection of French writing provided by the University of Quebec